morning, everyone. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Public Works for today, Wednesday, October 5th, 2016. Commissioner Repenning, James Davison, has sent to our present. President James, we have a quorum. May we start with Bureau introductions, please, starting with Bureau of Street Services. Good morning, Tim Tyson, Bureau of Street Services. Good morning, Hannah Choi, Bureau of Contract Administration. Good morning, Ruben Flamenco, Bureau of Street Lighting. Good morning, Chris Johnson, Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, Lloyd Gaines, Bureau of Sanitation. Good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, Ted Jordan, Public Works General Counsel. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. President James, we have received speaker cards under general public comment. We have no commentary under the Neighborhood Council. And we also received speaker cards on items one through six. Uh, OK. Um, I would just note for um, the office staff that's tuning in, um, maybe a, another request to GSD or the appropriate entity that will turn off the refrigeration service here in the <laughs> Board of Public Works, uh, today it's particularly noticeable. Um, I know that we've been working on that at some level for some time, but today they've hit the extreme. Um, uh, but that said, our first item of business, the approval of the meeting minutes from the meeting of Friday, September 16th, 2016. Is there a second to my motion that we approve those meeting minutes by Commissioner Repenning? Um, any objection? Without objection, we'll approve those meeting minutes. Um, Agenda item uh, number two, uh, the Bureau of Street Services. Actually, let's go to number six. Um, specifications have been submitted for board adoption and authorization to advertise for the invitation of bids. These, this is in council districts 1, 7, 8, 11, 13, and 14. These are for rectangular rapid flashing beacons and speed feedback signs along Temple Street, <clears throat> traffic signal and raised medians, and traffic signal at Roxford and Interstate 210 Freeway eastbound ramps. The estimate is $1,190,000. Um, the bid receipt date will be Wednesday, November 16, 2016. And Mr. Spindler put in a card for Pepita Pig. Mr. Spindler and the pig character. Thank you very much, the Pepita is back. First of all, it's too fucking cold in here. Turn on the heat, turn on the heat. Even though you use natural gas, I can't freeze to death. Now, look at this corruption. Oh boy, a million dollars. And it's going Temple Street all the way over to Roxford. See, the way you wrote this, everybody figures Temple Street adjoins Roxford, but you're wrong. I have a GPS. So Temple Street goes through CD1. Now, it doesn't go through fucking 8. It does go through parts of 14. No, a little bit on 13. Nothing to do with the evil Mike Bonin on 11. Now you go to Roxford in the 210, you drive up the goddamn freeway, way up north to the 5 freeway. Then you turn right and you run Roxford. That's where all the truck drivers get off and to call their prostitutes. See, that's on Roxford. So it's a very important street, Roxford, because that's where truck drivers get off and arrange for their prostitutes as they drive further north and they leave the city of Los Angeles, no prostitutes there because you're in unincorporated LA County. That's Mike Antonovich's district. He doesn't like prostitution. He doesn't like drug sales. My, he's such a bore, isn't he? So that's why we need traffic signals, feedback signs, rectangular rapid flashing that says, Warning, warning, you are in the city of L.A. You may buy all the drugs minutes. and have all the Two prostitutes minutes. you want. Yes, thank you, Mr. Spindler, on number six. Thank you. Um, is there a second to my motion that we adopt agenda item number six forthwith um, by Commissioners Repenning and Davis and Jacinto? So that will be the order. Um, 
uh, we will do so on agenda item number six. Agenda Thank item you, Mr. President. Uh, just quickly, just a clarification that uh, bid is for $1,190,000. Even so, so that's one one million one hundred ninety thousand. One million one hundred ninety thousand. So it's, yeah, it's one million one hundred ninety dollars. So it's one zero 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 one nine zero. Yeah, got it. Thank you for that. Um, regarding agenda item number five, authority for expenditure, <coughs> South Coast Air Quality Management District, the Office of Accounting and the Bureau of Sanitation are requesting board approval and an execution of authority for expenditure in the amount of $164,000. This is to encumber funds to pay fees and licenses required by the South Coast Air Quality Management District, a state regulatory agency, for this fiscal year, the period of July 1, 2016 through June 20th, 2017. SCAQMD has authority to impose fees for necessary equipment, permit renewals, annual emissions, and various other fees as outlined in SCAQMD Rule 301, uh, Mr. Spindler has a card for uh, Pepita Pig is back again. There it, go ahead, Pig. Speak. I don't know anything about this shit. All right, so I'll talk about it. All right. Number five. I don't understand. It's the city of Los Angeles is a municipal corporation. It's not a for-profit entity. Why can't you get the South Coast Air Quality Management District to waive these fees? It's, you're not, the only thing you're gonna do by paying the fees is using taxpayer money to shovel it away from a city to a state agency. That money is taxpayer money. It's just taking one set of taxpayer money and funneling it over to another set of taxpayer-funded money. As opposed to a business, a, bus a private business is, is using these, these credits and funds to reduce emissions. So I've been to enough meetings, you, you spent billions of dollars on, on reducing emissions and natural gas and all of this shit. So why can't they waive these fees as, as, a, city, as a city that's a municipal corporation? It, it makes no sense to me. You guys should be going up to Sacramento and, and and with your other cities and demanding they waive these fees as long as it's for city business. It's not, if it's for a, a project, a private construction project, then, then it's like Quimby fees. But this is $164,000 being stolen from the taxpayers of the city that could go for sidewalk repair into an agency where you've already encumbered money to comply with their mandates by 2020 and 2040. So it makes no sense to be charged this 164000 I think it's, it's utterly outrageous. So you guys lobby, and I know you do, so get together with Santa Clarita and all these other little cities and, and pass a bill to waive all of these fees so that it's brought back into the communities. There isn't a single city that would oppose Two that. minutes. Everybody would be on board. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spindler. Um, on number five, Sherry Simons. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, these, uh, excuse me, this AFE is for the payment of uh, permits and applications and associated fees. And if you have any questions. I don't have any questions. Um, uh, what do we pay? And this is, I know we encumber enough to pay it. What, what was the actual payout last year versus? The actual payout? Yeah. Um, 59127 And we anticipate this year being? Uh, it's 164000 is what we've requested this year. The uh, increase, the, the reason for the increase being? Um, the, uh, this AFE, it's for the Hyperion Waste wa Water Reclamation Plant, and there's going to be a new facility coming online. Uh, DGUP is coming yes, on course. next year, and it has uh, fees and emissions associated with that, and that's the anticipated. So both are going to be going together? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, DGUP is uh, permitted under Hyperion's Title V permit. Understood. Thank you okay. for the explanation for the sure. increase. Uh, any further questions on number five? I don't have any more questions on number five. Uh, Commissioner Repenning has made a motion that we adopt agenda item number five. Seconded by Commissioner Davis. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number five. Any issue sending number five forthwith? We will send number five forthwith. Thank you, Ms. Simons. Agenda item, uh, let's just stay in pattern here. Number four, um, Council District 12, a tree removal at 17127 
West Chatsworth Street, part of the sidewalk repair program, recommending that the board first find that the tree removal classifies as operation repair maintenance or minor alteration of existing street sidewalk and gutter involving negligible or no expansion of use beyond that previously existing and does not involve the removal of a scenic resource. Number two, that the action is exempt under Article 3, Section 1, Class 1, Category 3, existing facilities, sidewalk repair or maintenance of the City of Los Angeles Environmental Quality Act guidelines from 2002. And number three, that none of the exceptions to the use of a categorical exemption as set forth in Section 15300.2 of the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines apply. And then secondly, review and approve the no fee tree removal permit request for four shamel ash trees for the reconstruction of an off-grade public sidewalk. Tree replacements are required. And um, Mr. Spindler, I think you have a card on number four under the name of your friend there, uh, Ms. Uh, Pepita. She spells her name differently on various speaker cards, by the way. Uh, learning how to read. I'm trying. I'm trying to get my GED. Okay, now, this isn't CD12. Anybody know who that district belongs to? Of course, the Dibble Dwarf, Mitchell, the Dibble Dwarf Englander. And you know he ran for the Board of Supervisors and finished in fifth place. What a fucking loser. <laughs> now, he's back to work cutting trees. Destroying the environment of trees, canopy cover going down, pollutants going up. And that's why they're doing this. They're using the Willett Settlement as an excuse to cut down trees to reduce the maintenance on city tree services. So here you have street bureau services. They're taking the money and globbing it on and cutting the trees and then funneling the money over to Willett Settlement repairs at the rate of 30 million a year for the next 20 years, plus attorney fees. So now, this is the fucking problem. Why are you using a federal lawsuit settlement to destroy canopy cover and violate local plans and ordinances and destroying so many thousands of trees every year? Because, it's corruption. So that's why you don't have to do street maintenance, tree service. You funnel the money. That's not what Willett said. Willett said to get the money in the right way, not stealing it from one service and funneling it to another. It's money laundering in the abstract. Vote no on these bullshit, save the tree, and repair the sidewalk by curbing the root system. Save a tree, save a life. Especially people that have breathing disabilities, Kevin. Two minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spindler. On number four, Mr. Tyson. Good morning. Morning. The Bureau of Engineering lead agency in identifying defective sidewalks at several locations throughout the city of Los Angeles as part of the sidewalk repair program. Its contractors are working in close collaboration with the Bureau of Street Services in addressing potential impacts to street trees adjacent to targeted locations. Mr. Morier, Bureau of Engineering representative, contacted Bureau of Street Services in reference to the construction of an, uh, the reconstruction of an off-grade sidewalk curb and gutter condition at 17127 West Chatsworth Street bounded by Amistoy Avenue to the west and Janesta Avenue to the east. The Bureau of Street Services Arborist inspected the subject location on May 23, 2016. The inspection revealed four shamel ash trees located on the west side of the property on Amistoy Avenue side. The trees measure an average of 24 inches in diameter at chest height by 40 feet in height and are in fair health. The trees have outgrown the limited planting space provided and have contributed to the serious off-grade sidewalk conditions. The sidewalks are going to be removed and replaced due to uplift and severe disruption from the roots and the root crowns of the subject trees. 
Semi Park, 12th Council District Office Representative, was informed of the tree removal request on June 28, 2016. Notice of the proposed tree removals was physically posted on the subject trees on May 19, 2016. Proposed tree removals were included in the Bureau of Street Services tree removal notification system and the Community Forest Advisory Committee was notified. I have an amendment I'd like to read in about the uh, tree watering and um, planting. Go ahead and I have a couple of points. Go ahead. Okay. The tree's tree replacement policy shall be fulfilled by the planting of the following. Two 24-inch box size Chinese pistachio trees to be replanted at the tree removal location 17127 West Chatsworth Avenue. Three 24-inch box size Chinese pistachio trees to be replanted at 10701 Amistoy Avenue. One 24-inch box size Chinese pistachio tree to be replanted at 10719 Amistoy Avenue. And one 24-inch box Chinese pistachio tree to be replanted at 10731 Amistoy Avenue. One 24-inch box size African fern pine will be replanted at 17149 Chatsworth. All tree replacements shall be planted by the Office of Community Beautification or its contractor. A separate contract amendment is anticipated to determine source of funding and allocation. The Urban Forestry Division shall begin weekly watering of the tree replacements upon tree planting confirmation from Office of Community Beautification. Tree watering shall continue for a period of three years. Um, so, just I, I'm just going to add to the record. I, this is, isn't necessarily a question, um, Tim, but you got two, for lack of a better term, maybe I overuse it, spectacular circumstances here. There is significant uplift here. Yes. I mean, it's crater uplift. The whole sidewalk. And the whole sidewalk. And you can see, even in these not so great quality black and white photos, you can see the, uh, the hilly effect, the rolling hilly effect of, that the sidewalk has, has happened next to, I mean, immediately adjacent to, uh, touching a multifamily uh, dwelling that obviously people are live, live in. And uh, I, 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 I'm, I don't know to what extent there, it may be um, a facility that, um, uh, that houses seniors as well. I would imagine there are seniors in so, there. Because that's, an, that's a priority is, in the Willett settlement for the, uh, for the ADA coordinator. Yeah, this is really non-passable for someone who's disabled. This is, this is, it has small asphalt repairs everywhere. Uh, uh, the, the subject sidewalk really needs to be fixed. And unfortunately, these shamal ash trees can grow to, I have one at my house that would take three people to put their arms around. Well, that's, that's my take. These are not that large, but the other aspect of this, while we have such significant dangerous uplift right. that is a public safety hazard. Absolutely. We also have very beautiful trees that are having to be removed. Right. I mean, um, these trees in the right place, like the one I have at my home, can grow to substantial size and so these trees unfortunately they were planted almost like in the middle of the sidewalk if you see the photos and um, they have really outgrown that we don't we don't plant trees of this uh, species in a corridor like this or in a place like this today this is old uh, type planting that has caused a lot of these problems uh, due to the uh, species of tree being planted in such a small area. Some of those mistakes made in the, the 70s and, 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 yes. and, and 80s. Um, so the, I recognize the, that these trees have to, to come out for the um, sidewalk repairs that are needed. I appreciate the detail that you provided in the, uh, the amendment, the, up, the update. Um, I know that, that the Bureau is going to come back soon to the board um, with um, an up an update, a presentation on what the Bureau is doing with the Bureau of Engineering for sidewalk repair program and, and not only preserving but increasing the tree canopy in the city of Los Angeles. Um, but I, I, I did want to uh, indicate for the record, this year's budget allocation for tree trimming uh, was an increase from prior years, correct? Yes, it was. And then uh, 
we're using a million dollars of that for on-demand trimming, but the total budget was more than last year. And the, the on-demand, the million dollars that we have for tree trimming, on-demand trimming, that's not something that we had in, in, in recent prior years, is that correct? We did have the on-demand, but it was only $500,000. Okay, so it was increased this Yes, year. so okay. the budget is increased and we were allowed a little bit more for that for each council uh, district to be able to pick and choose some locations for them to satisfy needs they have. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions on agenda item number four, Commissioner Jacinto? Thank you, President James. Tim, thank you for the report. Just a, qu a question, a clarification there. We're replanting seven trees. We're taking out four, correct? That's what it says in the, in the report. I, I can't, I thought We're I We're planting eight trees. We're taking out four and planting eight. And there will one. be three 24-inch okay. box size Chinese pistachio at 10701, two 24-inch box Chinese pistachio at 17127, one 24-inch box Chinese pistachio at 10719, another one at 10731. That's your additional one. And then a different species of tree at, t at 17149 Chatsworth Street. The total of eight. It's total of eight, total yes. Eight, total and they're all within the vicinity right where the trees are being removed. And they're the species that will uh, do much better in the future for sustainability with the sidewalk being there as well. Excellent. Thank you for that clarification. I think that this is just going to... As we embark on the sidewalk repair program, we're going to see the removal of the trees, the impact on the canopy, and obviously over time that we are going to be able to have that, you know, that population of trees at different uh, at different stages of their of their lives and be able to manage this forward is just a, a necessary step forward. So I look f look forward to receiving the reports and sort of overall how it, the, how the program is going. In time, the canopy will surpass what we are removing. Excellent. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Any further questions on number four? I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number four as amended. Um, is there a second? Seconded by Commissioners Repenning and Jacinto and Davis. So that will be the order. Um, uh, any issues saying number four forthwith? We'll send number four forthwith. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Thank you. On agenda item number three, Council District 15 requested tree removal at 315 North Island Avenue, recommending that the board First, find that the tree removal classifies as operation, repair, maintenance, or minor alteration of an existing street sidewalk and gutter involving negligible or no expansion of use beyond that previously existing and does not involve the removal of a scenic resource. Secondly, that the action is exempt under Article 3, Section 1, Class 1, Category 3, existing facilities, sidewalk repair or maintenance, of the City of Los Angeles Environmental Quality Act guidelines from 2002. And thirdly, that none of the exceptions to the use of a ca categorical exemption as set forth in section 15300.2 of the state CEQA guidelines apply. Um, and also review and approve this no fee tree removal permit request for seven Indian laurel figs, these are ficus trees, for the reconstruction of an off-grade public sidewalk Tree replacements are required. Mr. Spindler, you have a card in on number three for your character there. Number three. All right, go ahead, Piggy. Again, reiterating the remarks. Now we're down into CD 15, the forgotten land. Yes, all the way down into the port. The city of Los Angeles still holds on to San Pedro and they hold on to the south area bays including Harbor City. It's time for the city of LA to get the fuck out of there and free these communities. Joe Buscaino, the police criminal is in charge of that district and today seven fucking trees die. Let's take a moment of silence for seven more trees. Yes, you're going to kill, kill the trees, the trees, and we need the canopy cover. How many years is it going to take to exceed our canopy cover? Mr. Genius, I'd like to know, is it going to be another 50 years? So fuck this and get rid of Joe Busca, you know, vote no in March on the dirt bag. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spinner. On number three, Mr. Tyson. Excuse me. 
Nicole Deering, I'm sorry. Ernesto Ibarra with the Los Angeles Department of Water Power applied to the Bureau of Engineering for a Class A permit to reconstruct an off-grade sidewalk condition at 315 North Island Avenue, a Department of Water and Power facility. Bureau of Engineering informed Mr. Barr that the sidewalk reconstruction may require street tree removals. Therefore, Mr. Barr contacted the Bureau of Street Services requesting the site be inspected. The Bureau of Arborists inspected the subject location on May 2nd, 2016. The inspection revealed seven Indian laurel fig ficus microcarpa trees in front of 315 North Island Avenue. The trees measure approximately 20 to 24 inches in diameter at chest height by 30 feet in height growing in a six foot parkway. The roots and the root crowns from the subject trees have significantly contributed to defective conditions of the public sidewalk and curb. Surface roots are prevalent throughout the parkway and in some areas are growing several inches above the soil. Root pruning of the trees would significantly and adversely affect the tree's health and the structural integrity of the trees. Nicole Deering, Field Deputy, 15th Council District, was informed of the tree removal request on July 26, 2016 and will notify the Bureau of any objections. Notice of the proposed tree removals was posted on the trees physically on May 11, 2016. Proposed tree removals were included in the Bureau of Street Services Tree Removal Notification System and the Community Forest Advisory Committee was notified. The applicant shall plant seven 24-inch box, Brisbane box, Tristania converted trees and provide watering to all replacement trees for a minimum of three years. There, they shall be, um, there is no additional room to plant due to the spacing requirements. Therefore, the applicant shall deliver seven 15-gallon container-sized camphora trees to the Bureau's nursery. And I'd like you to, uh, this is a good example if you look at the photos that were provided of the of ficus uh, trees, of trees that were planted not deep enough. Many years ago when these trees were planted, they were all planted too high. That is why these parkways are so riddled with surface roots throughout. I mean, the roots are almost a foot high. They're massive. Yeah. And, and, and if you look at the buttress roots where the roots come off of the tree, that's actually the depth where the tree should have been planted 40, 35 years ago when it was planted, but this is what happens when trees aren't planted correctly. When the roots get to that height, um, do they, does their safety to be in an urban environment uh, diminish? As far as getting in and out of the vehicles and trying to walk no, through the No, not just or? that, but if you, I mean, we can't, oh, we does, can't, we can't trim the roots because it would compromise the safe, the, the, the integrity of the tree. The tree could fall. Correct. Correct. The, the roots are the foot of the tree. If you, if you start cutting away the foot of the tree, then it has less and less stability to hold the rest of the crown of the tree up. And when variables come in, wind and these types of things, and you've taken away the part that's holding the tree in the ground, that's when they topple over and fail. Right. Um, Commissioner, repenting on uh, number three. Um, Tim, you've been doing a really good job finding second uh, tree locations, um, even when there's not room uh, at the immediate site. Um, I'm just wondering on this, because it is BWP and I feel like we, we can ask more um, than we could, you know, a private homeowner, have you, did, you weren't able to find any? It wasn't that, uh, Commissioner, we were looking at it as a voluntary improvement. When it's a voluntary improvement of a property owner, we don't want to make them go and plant trees other places and have to water them and do those kind of things. But, I mean, if you would like, I could uh, discuss this with LADWP and we can see if we can find some corresponding locations within the vicinity and see if they'd be willing to uh, plant and water. They're planning to uh, hand water them, right? I, I don't know how they'll be watering them, but they have to water them for a period of three years or until established. In other words, if the tree dies, they have to replace the tree until it is established there for a three-year period straight. I, I just think it, it's important for us as a city to, to model what we'd like to see from from other folks who apply for permits. So if there's a way to find additional locations so that we're not just sending the other seven to the nursery, that would be that would be ideal. I will work on that. Thank you. Great. Thank you, um, Mr. Tyson. Thank you, Commissioner Repenning. Anything further on number three? I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number three. Um, is there a second on number three by Commissioner Davis? Any objection? 
Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number three. Any issues sending number three forthwith? We'll send number three forthwith. Mr. President, for Net Accomplice Executive Officer, just to clarify, that item was just passed as recommended in the board report. The suggestions made by Commissioner Repenning are to the Bureau of Street Services, but that does not amend the board report. Is that correct? Is yes. that the intent? Perfect. Yeah, the, Thank the, you. The, the, the Bureau, we, we trust that Mr. Tyson will go out and contact the LA Department of Water and Power. Great. My word's gold. Yeah, we don't need to add it to the board report. Thank you, though. Um, agenda item. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tyson. Agenda item, and number number three to go forth with. Agenda item number two, Council District 14, um, tree removal, um, 1599 Glen Alice, uh, Alyssa Avenue. Um, Glen Elsa, don't know that one. Sidewalk repair program. Recommending that the board find that the tree removal first classifies as operation, repair, maintenance, or minor alteration of existing street, sidewalk, and gutter involving negligible or no expansion of use beyond that previously existing and does not involve the removal of a scenic resource. Number two, if the action is exempt under Article 3, Section 1, Class 1, Category 3, existing facilities, sidewalk repair, or maintenance of the City of Los Angeles Environmental Quality Act guidelines from 2002. And thirdly, that none of the exceptions to the use of a categorical exemption as set forth in Section 15300.2 of the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines apply. And then secondly, review and approve this no-fee tree removal permit request for the removal of three Chinese elm trees for the reconstruction of an off-grade public sidewalk. Tree replacements are required, and Mr. Uh, Spindler has put in a, um, a card for Pepita on number two. Okay, so there's 1599 Glen Elsa Avenue. What do you see? A lot of shade and canopy cover. It's a beautiful set of trees on that corner. This is what you're gonna, you're gonna chop all that down. Decades that that place is never going to have shade like that in the summer That look at I mean that that's middle America. What the fuck is this? Really? Really and you know why you're gonna do it because there's two reasons number one. It's a Latino area That's the first reason and more importantly Jose Weezer, are the scum of the earth is the council district rep misrepresentative representative I mean what, what the fuck is this? Look at the goddamn tree with that amount of canopy cover on that house. That house will go down thirty to $60,000 in value the minute you do that. The minute you do that. That saves thousands of dollars on, on electricity costs every year. It reduces pollutants. It reduces greenhouse gases just by having that in a clear residential neighborhood. It's not even close. So, you know, you guys are... You, you guys are getting away with stuff that, that would never happen in any American city except this city. That's why this city is, is completely fucked up on steroids. You can upgrade that sidewalk, you could save those trees. And are you going to give that homeowner the value back? Are you going to give him the diminished value of his home? No, because you're not going to tell him, we're reducing the cost of your and the value of your home and increasing your utility bills for the next 25 years. You think that you think you told them that? You should have told them that. No, because they're just going to come out and bust all this shit. Nobody's going to know why. Nobody's going to know why. And are you going to leave the stumps? You're going to cut them and you're going to leave the fucking stumps too, right? So, you know, that is disgusting. This Two is minutes. a fucked up situation. It really is. And you're doing it everywhere. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spinner. Mr. Tyson. Mr. Tyson, uh, your report, and then I have some questions regarding um, what it, some of what is depicted in the photographs here. Yes. And I would like to remind the board that every one of these trees, the property owners has signed property owner's authorization forms, knowing, meaning that they have been explained and understand everything about the tree and why the trees need to be removed and what's actually taking place. Okay, well, since you... Uh, went there first, Mr. Tyson. Um, uh, let me, um, and then we'll get to your report. Um, it, not long ago, um, I know, Ms., I think all four of us um, at various times have uh, uh, 
uh, been in South LA um, working with community groups related to tree removals. Um, there was a time uh, not too long ago, um, uh, I think bef before um, Commissioner Davis's last and Commissioner Sinto's last visit, Commissioner Repenning and I were in Council District 8 um, uh, on a tour of some tree sidewalk repair problems. Sure. And one of the, we were specifically asked to come to a woman's residence because the, the tree, which was, again, I'm going to use this word, this spectacular tree that had been there many years, had uplifted the sidewalk, but also had created a crack in the wall near the foundation of the property. Um, and has, has made a request of the city that the tree be removed um, because of the damage it's causing to the sidewalk, her home's foundation, and the wall. Now that was what we saw with our own eyes in Council District 8. I look at this photograph, and this is a question I have. These photographs adjacent to the trees show either complete separation of the wall from, each, from itself um, and the adjacent sidewalk damage that's been patched, mm -hmm. which would lead me to believe that there could be uh, damage to the foundation, as well as other trees, there's, the wall is patched next to the tree. So is, that, is this a situation where the tree roots can have that kind of chain reaction to other things it's attached to? With any living tree like this, as the roots grow, roots grow past any solid infrastructure, they can cause damage, and that's what's exactly happening here. The roots are growing under the wall and on into the yard of the home that's there, and they could end up damaging the home over there as well. I don't have any photos of the home, but the wall has been cracked a few times. In the photos, you can see, like you had stated, where they patched the wall, but the last photo where the wall is actually, you can see through the wall. So with these uh, Chinese elm trees, uh, one of them actually leans out over the street, so you would be cutting tension roots, and tension roots uh, want to hold the tree up. Compression roots are on the opposite side of the, uh, of, the, of the tension being put against the tree. If it's on a lean, then the back side of the tree would have the tension roots and the front side would have the compression roots. And it works both ways. If you uh, cut on the curb side and take away the uh, compression roots, then you have nothing actually holding the front side of the tree up. So, and, and that's one of the things about these trees being in the parkway is they don't have a lot of compression roots because they're right up next to the uh, curbs. But what they have is tension roots and those tension roots grow to the rear of the tree towards whatever's behind it, usually the sidewalk, then the walls, and then the homes. And I've been called many, many, many times for uh, uh, trees where uh, they've done tree reports and the tree experts have come out and uh, not earthquake related, but the trees that are in the parkway are actually damaging the person's house behind the trees. So I'll, I'll go forward with this, but I'm glad you brought that up. I was gonna talk about that when I got to the photos. And we're, we're, we're talking about some serious damage here and uh, Chinese elm trees aren't a tree that can be root pruned very often at all. So the size of these trees are uh, really uh, is, You'd be cutting the tension roots. It's really not uh, something that should be done. That's why these trees are being uh, requested for removal to fix and repair all the damage that they have caused to include the, the person's private property. So I'll, I'll go through this. The Bureau of Engineering is the lead agency in identifying defective sidewalks with several locations throughout the city as part of the sidewalk repair program. Uh, the Bureau of Engineering representative contacted the Bureau in reference to the reconstruction of the off-grade sidewalk condition at 1599 West Glen Elisa Avenue, bounded by Townsend Avenue to the west and Floriston Avenue to the east. Bureau Arborist inspected the subject location on June 23, 2016. The inspection revealed three Chinese elm, almost part of a trees located at 1599 West Glen, Glen Asali, Avenue, I can't pronounce it either, so. Um, on the Townsend Avenue side, 
The trees measure an average of 20 inches in diameter at chest height by 36 feet in height and are in fair health and growing in four foot tree wells. The trees have outgrown their planting space providing, causing the off-grade sidewalk conditions and other damage to the property. The defective sidewalks are proposed to be removed and replaced due to the uplift and severe disruption of the roots and the roof crowns. Nate Hayward, Public Works Director, 14th Council District Office, was informed of the tree removal request on June 23, 2016. Proposed tree removals were included in the Bureau of Street Services Tree Removal Notification System. The trees were posted on June 21, 2016. And CFAC was also contacted on um, June 23, 2016. Now, I have an uh, um, amendment I'd like to read into the record on the tree planting and watering. Okay, thank you. The city's tree replacement policy shall be fulfilled by the planting of the following. Two 24-inch box size crepe myrtle trees to be replanted at tree removal location 1599 Glen Elisa Avenue. Three 24-inch box size crepe myrtle trees to be replanted at 1596 Grandola Avenue and one 24-inch box size crepe myrtle tree to be replanted at 1599 Grandola Avenue. All tree replacements shall be planted by the Office of Community Beautification or its contractor. A separate contract amendment is anticipated to determine the source of funding and allocation. The Urban Forestry Division shall begin weekly watering of the tree replacements upon tree planting confirmation from uh, Office of Community Beautification. Tree watering shall continue for a three-year period. The uh, crepe myrtle tree was selected as uh, what's provided for the growing space. You can imagine looking at the trees that are there and what they've done in a, in a 30 year period of time. And what's uniformly planted on the street are crepe myrtles. So that's why we were going back with a uniform type planting uh, throughout the uh, palette of trees in the area. Great, thank you, Mr. Tyson. Any questions from Mr. Tyson on agenda item number two? other than the discussion we've already had. I don't have any further questions. Um, I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number two. Is there a second on number two by Commissioner Davis? Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number two. That's as, a, as amended? As amended. Thank you, Mr. Campos, yes. So my motion would be to adopt number two as amended, um, and, um, uh, and that would be uh, the second for Commissioner Davis. And, um, and then, so um, I'll call for the vote again. Any objection uh, to number two as amended? So we'll adopt number two as amended. We'll send it forthwith as well. Thank you, Mr. Campos. Thank you. Um, agenda item uh, number one. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Agenda item number one. Council District 15, Bureau of Sanitation. Recommending that the board approve and execute the letter of agreement between the Bureau of Sanitation and Leverage Information Systems to implement a pilot program in Council District 15 to determine the feasibility of using a surveillance camera system to monitor and enforce illegal dumping activities. Myself or two members of the board will award and execute the letter of agreement and upon conclusion of the pilot program, the Bureau of Sanitation will report the findings and conclusions from the pilot to the Board of Public Works and to the City Council Energy and Environment Committee. Mr. Spindler, you have a card in for um, Pepita Pig. Mr. Campos. Also, Mr. President, just for the record, uh, Mr. Spindler has a little less than a minute left under the 10-minute aggregate rule, so therefore we will set his time at one minute. Mr. Spindler, go ahead, one minute. Thank you, go ahead. That's right, well said, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, man, fuck the police, yes. This is another cameras, uh, you know, all kinds of these fucking cameras. And 
as we saw the shooting that happened the other day, you turn them on and turn them off and you keep the video that helps your interests and you don't give those videos publicly to the people. And that's what you're going to do here. Because these cameras need to be, and the video footage needs to be available to the public so we can see exactly what's going on. So when you, I'm, when you allege somebody's dumping... Thank you, Mr. Spindler, on number one. Eh, uh, Mr. Rosado on number one. Uh, good morning, Mr. President, commissioners, uh, city attorney, bureau representatives, and Mr. Executive Officer. Uh, my name is Raymond Rosati, and I'm with uh, LA Sanitation. Uh, we're here today to request the Board of Public Works authorized sanitation to implement a one-year pilot program for, to test the feasibility of using leverage information systems to monitor and enforce legal dumping activities. The Clean Sheets Initiative was implemented by Mayor Garcetti through Executive Directive Number 8 as an initiative for a citywide neighborhood cleanup program. Sanitation is the designated lead for the initiative and we've been dispatching our fleet to remove thousands of tonnage of uh, illegally dumped waste. While dedicated cleanups have um, improved the city, illegal dumping continues to be a problem. Uh, CD15 Council Member Joe Buscaino and other members of the council have directed sanitation to use cameras to mitigate illegal dumping. Uh, this pilot project will install cameras in CD15 that will connect wirelessly to sanitation's office. The vendor, Leverage Information Systems, has an existing system with LEPD uh, in the Venice area and there's been positive feedback regarding their systems and video qualities. The cameras will be concealed to prevent vandalism and installed in a publicly undisclosed area location to capture the vehicle license plate and occurring activities. Sanitation has a dedicated team for investigation and enforcement with the experience, expertise, and authority to independently review uh, surveillance footage, perform suspect interviews, and file criminal reports with the prosecutor's office. Uh, the team will run, license, li will run license plate to get the suspect's name and address and conduct press release conference to deter illegal dumpers. Uh, this pilot project is for one year, and at the end of the pilot project, we will return to the board and city council for our recommendations on the merits of expanding this program if the, pi if the pilot findings are favorable. The cameras that we're installing are plug and play ready, um, so that means that they're relocatable. Uh, the future plan will be to relocate these cameras and place them in other illegal dumping uh, hotspot areas and purchase additional cameras to expand the program. Uh, the estimated cost of the pilot project is for 88500 and there's no impact to the general fund uh, as this pilot project is funded from the Solid Resources Special Fund. Uh, in summary, we're here today to request the Board of Public Works approve sanitation for the implementation of the one-year pilot program uh, for illegal dumping surveillance and enforcement, and we request that this item be approved forthwith. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um Um, any questions on agenda? I, I, I had a couple of questions, but it was answered in the board report regarding the location of the cameras. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Penning, with helping yeah, I, with that. I, I wanted to, Commissioner uh, Davis. Yeah, I wanted to ask, the, we have a special fund out of the Bureau of Sanitation for, these, um, for this particular pilot project. Is that correct? Yes. And we have not implemented um, this technology with cameras in other areas of the city and other districts, or is this the first one we're doing? Uh, the other council districts have directed uh, sanitation uh, to install cameras within their own council districts, but those funds are from the council districts themselves. This will be the first funded by sanitation. Okay, so in fact, when do we get the fund for this particular um, project? Uh, we already have the funds available. So we've always had the funds in sanitation. I'm trying to get... Uh, Commissioner Penning can answer that. Yes, if you, yeah, I would um, like to know Commissioner more about Davis, it. this was part of the, the Clean Streets program. Um, the, this comes out of the, the overall Clean Streets budget that was approved last um, fiscal year. And so the, we, as the Clean Streets program has been rolling out, um, new items have been added. Um, since the mayor came into office each year. So we've been able to put things in place that, we, that we've needed. Um, enforcement has been an area where we have a lot of growth to do, um, but this is something that actually Council Member Buscaino um, has uh, cared deeply about. And so 
he really wanted to make sure that we that we allocated some resources. I think there's a recognition that this is definitely not enough and that there are a lot of areas throughout LA where we would we would love to have more enforcement. Um, so this is a pilot to see how well these cameras work, whether yes. they're going to give us the evidence that we need um, in order to actually take us to the city attorney a case that they can then prosecute. Sure. Yes. No, I support the uh, using this as a tool and certainly this is something that will be effective for us throughout the city. I just wanted better education in terms of how we were able to get the funds. So now that I know that it comes from clean streets, I know how the funds came about. But uh, obviously throughout uh, the years, we've had various hot spots throughout the city. And certainly I think that this um, technology will help us tremendously because obviously people aren't dumping in the middle of the day where we can see them. Yes. So I think that this uh, surveillance system will help us considerably. And again, I think we will find out once you implement the pilot project what kind of results we can get. So it's good to know where the funding came from. And I think, again, that this uh, technology will hopefully help us uh, throughout other areas as well. So let's just wait to see what our results are. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Commissioner Jacinto. Thank you, President James. Mr. Rosati, thank you. Uh, you know, I too support video surveillance for enforcement and, and the impact that it could have uh, on hotspots and illegal dumping. I did have a question regarding, there was an interesting um, uh, issue brought up about the use of the video uh, for other types of issues, whether it's crime or some other type of thing. Do we have any, uh, can you comment a little bit on who would have jurisdiction and, and access to that video, Mr. Rosati? Uh, the video will be uh, viewed by our investigation enforcement team solely for the legal dumping. Uh, and so they have an, um, uh, they've worked with the prosecutor's office and this is uh, solely for the legal dumping task force. Um, okay. Any other activities um, will not be uh, pursued such as drug use or other. Commissioner mm. Penning. Uh, I would just uh, add to that that I think the, the way it'll be used is if there is a, um, a dumping that occurs, mm -hmm. they can go back and review the footage. Mm -hmm. I would assume that if there's another type of crime where there's evidence of some other type of crime occurring, that footage could be used by the LAPD. Oh, yes. um, I think, Sorry. though, that it's not something that, it's not like there's going to be charm. someone there watching the camera, watching the footage. Um, yes, Sorry you know, all the time looking for other types of activity occurring mm -hmm. in those locations. It, it'll be more something that is reviewed if a, if a crime occurs. Um, and I, I would also add uh, to, um, to, to, to you that uh, you mentioned going to E2 with, with a presentation. I think that it would also be good um, to go to the Public Works Committee when you have information on how this is going to um, how this is going because I know there's a lot of interest as well and that's the committee led by Mr. Buscaino and so I think they'd yes. probably be interested there as well. Thank you Commissioner Penning. Commissioner Davis anything further? Oh no. Okay. No. Um, thank you. Is there a motion on agenda? I don't have anything further. Is there a motion on? Uh, oh Mr. Campos. So do we need to add an amendment indicating that this needs to be sent to the mayor? Uh, yes, Mr. President, my recommendation to the board is to consider this item as amended to forward this letter of agreement to the mayor's office pursuant to executive directive number three under the Villaraigosa series, which basically states that any contract that's over 90 days or 20, and or $25,000 needs his approval or the mayor's office approval. So therefore, uh, recommendation is to approve as amended to forward it to the mayor for approval. I don't have any problem with that. Um, then that would be, uh, is that, uh, that, is that, Oh, is that amendment okay with you, Commissioner Repenning? Okay, so that's Commissioner's motion as amended. Uh, thank you, Mr. Campos. Uh, seconded by Commissioner Jacinto and Davis. So without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number one and, as amended. Any issue sending it forthwith? We'll send number one forthwith. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Campos, have we cleared the desk other than uh, general public comment? Yes, that would clear the desk. And I need to close the neighborhood council category of commentary as well. Correct. Uh, so, Mr. Spindler, you have a card in uh, for your uh, ventriloquist there, Pepita Pig. The pig's tired today. So, as you heard, we're going to have the camera, and if we see any other criminal activity, we're not going to use it for that, like drug sales. So, again, the apartheid city continues. 
the dumping grounds are CD15 and CD6 on Sepulveda Boulevard. So I'm going to play the theme song of the city of Los Angeles. They wrote this song for this city, man. Coachella 2016. 18-year-old kid shot. Bullshit. The assistant fire chief, thousands of fire inspections with overtime paid, none of the inspections done, bullshit. And the worst cancer of all, Chief Charlie Beck needs to be fired and fucking out of here. Yes, that's the theme song for L.A. Fuck the LAPD, fuck the police, because they are your enforcers for your criminal organization. You shoot these kids, you show a video with, a, with a gun in a hand, minutes. just because Thank it you, benefits you. Uh, so, Mr. Campos, have we cleared the desk? Yes. Then we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.